Hey guys, this is Dermac here, and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial for Ableton 9 and how to sample in Ableton and use chops with my method using a drum pad. Um, when I first started making sample based beats, it was kind of hard to figure out how to chop and a method that worked well for me. And there's a lot of methods out there, and each of them has their own limitations and their own capabilities. And this one here is going to be is actually my favorite. Um, there is one major issue with it, which I'll get into, and I'll give you more ways to get around that. So first what you're going to want to have here is you're going to have an audio track. This is where you're going to want to put your sample in. Um, you don't need the audio track, but it's always good to just have it there so you can go back to. So what I'm going to be putting in here is Morgana King, A Taste of Honey, just a small clip I recorded off of my turntable. Um, what I usually do is unwarp it first just so I can see the actual length of it. So this is going to be my sample here. What I'm also going to have is a drum rack. So I'm going to take this drum rack here and I'm going to drag it in. You double click on it and you see I have my drum rack right here. Now I want to put my sample in and I'm just going to put it in C1. So right here, you already see I have my sample up. Now there's a couple different things you can do to this. So it gives you a wider customization for what you want to do to your sample. The first thing I do is if you hit this view right here, this will bring this up, and then you hit this little in out button. These will give you these options. So you can set up receive and play. So on C1, which is either you can set it up to your keyboard or if you have a drum pad. So every time I hit that button, it'll play there. So you see it going there. Um, and then you can set it to play a certain one. So C3, and then I could do, well, when I press C uh, D1, well, it's going to also play this one. Or when I press this button, it's going to play these four. So I can play multiple at once. And then the next thing I like to add is a choke point. This is really good because I, I do a lot of like 90s hip hop, stuff like that for my sample beats. But it also works for other varieties of music that are sample based. Your choke point, pretty much what it is, if I have three different samples set up here, and they're all at different time points, then when I play them, they will cancel each other out. So when you hit the next key, it'll stop the other one, it'll choke it, it'll turn it off, and start playing your next one, which is really good when you want to stop continuing the sound so you don't have to be like, oh, well, I want this exactly to be one quarter bar, and then stop it there. So that's the first little tip I do, is always put on these choke points, and you can separate them, there's 16 different choke points. This way, if you have um, maybe a bass sound, and you have two different bass sounds, but you don't want that to get cut off by your high end, obviously. So you have the separate choke point. And then I'm going to close this all off with this button here. Because you mostly won't need that again if you do. You can also affect individual volumes. Because what I'm going to show you next will actually have a change with that. So you have your sample here. And say you want to transpose it or change the volume, detune it, do a fade to each one. You can actually set it up so you have one like master control panel that will affect all the ones here. So we'll go to transpose and you click. Actually, first what I'm gonna do, you taste, hit this little up arrow here. This will bring it up into a larger view. It makes it easier to chop. and also gives you more options here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right click transpose and we're gonna map it to the first macro, which will bring it right over here. And you see, it'll put it at its lowest setting. You can change that then. I'm gonna do the same to detune. Uh, volume, you can do it for whatever you want. These are usually the three I do, but say you want to make sure, just in case you have a fade, um, fade out, the volume and velocity. But I'm just going to go with these for right now. So I'm going to bring my transpose normal, my D or zero steps, my detune is going to be zero cents, and then my volume, I just put the negative 12, which is the default for Ableton. So now when I copy and paste this over, you see these are all grayed out, and they will each change according to this. So that makes it a little easier to chop it up. And then now, the final step that you can do with these, you just line them up where you want. Here, here, there. And you can also zoom in on this if you click and hold and drag. So then you can play them. Now it's easy chops. Now the one limitation that I was talking about is the fact that can't really warp these and time stretch them. And the reason for that is because when I do warp here, you're going back to the same speed. Then you're going back to the same speed. And it 
really doesn't work there for you. So that can't really be done here in this method of chopping samples. So I will have a, another video then showing um, a different method for chopping. That's a more time lengthy process, but it does get what you're going for when you want to time warp, maintain the same pitch or transposition. So, Ben Dermack here, and I hope you guys enjoyed this Ableton tutorial, and I hope it helped you out. Peace.